Hi, I'm Brett Larkin. Today we're doing a therapeutic routine for the shoulders and upper back with the Hurt So Good Massage Balls by Yoga Body. In this routine, our goal is to work with our interconnective tissue, our fascia. You can think of your fascia as a giant 3D spider web running throughout your whole body from your head to your toe. Everything in your body, your bones, your muscles, your cells and your nerves resides in this connective tissue. This is why releasing and hydrating our fascia with self-massage, like we're gonna do with the Hurt So Good massage balls, can have such a profound effect. Three key things to know before we get started. The first is the difference between single point pressure and shearing. Single point pressure is when we melt into the ball. We just let our body become one with the ball without a lot of movement. Shearing is once we let the ball sink in with single point pressure, we begin moving side to side. We will do both, single point focus and shearing. The second thing to know is that what we're looking for is therapeutic pain. We don't want pain that's <gasps> ouch and causes our body to tense up. We want therapeutic pain and you know it's therapeutic pain when you can breathe into it. So make sure you can breathe into the ball pressing into your body. And if it's so sharp that it's stopping your breath, you need to back off, it means you've gone too far. The third and last thing to know is that these routines are gonna be the most effective if you start creating your own micro movements on the balls. Yes, I will be guiding and directing you, but the more you can keep experimenting with the positioning through micro movements, the more you're gonna find that perfect juicy spot that only you know how to access. Now grab all your props, any blocks, blankets, pillows from your bed, have them nearby as we do this ball rolling routine. Let's get started. All right, so I wasn't kidding. Make sure to have any blocks, blankets, props nearby because if you find a juicy spot on the ball, you might wanna wedge your seat or shoulder in a position in order to hold it there. So it's really important to have props you can access nearby. Now for our first setup, we're gonna take the Hurt So Good massage balls and we're gonna put them on either side of our spine. Now it's really important that you never want to roll with the ball directly on your spinal column. We don't wanna press the balls into our vertebra. So if you can just feel or sense on yourself where your spine is in the middle of your back, you don't wanna press the ball ever into the spine itself. We wanna have the balls on either side of the spine. This is very important. So our first setup, we're gonna have the balls positioned just here on the left and right of the spine. You're gonna to come to lie down so you can place your ball side by side. Take the soles of the feet underneath your knees and gently lie back. Once you've lied down, just readjust. And we wanna start with the balls right in that meaty part of our trapezius muscle. Make sure they're on the left and right of your spine. And then you're gonna press down into your feet to lift your hips off the ground. And you'll notice that your hips are sort of like this lever. If you put your hips back on the ground, it's less intense. If you lift your hips up, the pressure intensifies and it becomes more intense. For now, let's just keep our hips down. We're gonna take our hands behind the nape of our neck. So interlace your fingers right around your hairline. And to start, we'll just take a few deep breaths. A few deep breaths in and out of the body. So you can inhale with me for three counts. Exhale for three. Inhale three. Exhale three. So you're using your hands to support your head so there's no strain in the neck. But we're just allowing the balls to sink into our connective tissue. So if you remember how I talked about single point pressure, and shearing, right now we're just doing single point pressure. We're just letting the balls melt in. Take a few more deep breaths on your own. And this is where having pillows or blocks is helpful because if you don't want to hold your head as we just melt and rest here, you could always just put a block underneath the head or a pillow. <sighs> 
This single point pressure is such an important way to start our self-massage because if we just begin violently rolling with the balls, we could send our body into a fight or flight response. We could actually inadvertently send our body into stress. By doing this single point pressure and just taking some breaths to let the ball sink in before applying deep pressure, we're letting our body know that it's okay to relax and we're creating some resonance with the balls. So we always wanna approach the body just like we'd approach a frightened animal, right? Just being very slow, very calm. Take two more huge deep breaths. Inhale, fill up all the way. And exhale completely, nose or mouth. Once more, huge breath in. Exhale all the way. Good. Now remember, we're all different and the level of intensity each of us needs is different. So I'm just gonna be giving you lots of options. You could keep that block under your head if you felt like what we just did was intense enough. If you're looking for a little bit more pressure, Take the hands behind the head again, interlace the fingers, and begin to very gently lift the hips up. Good, and then just drop the hips back down to the floor, and do that a few more times, just sort of finding interesting pressure points where the balls are pressing into your traps. We'll do two more, just a gentle lift of the hips and a gentle lowering. So we're just intensifying our single point pressure. Little lift and gentle lower, good. Now keep the hips just very gently lifted. And if you have blanket, block, or pillow, you could even set that underneath the hips. From here, we're gonna take a little mini crunching motion. So you can have your elbows come towards one another. It's not like when we do fitness crunches and we need to keep the elbows wide, just do a couple crunches. And now we're getting more into a shearing action where we're actually wedging the balls into our traps. Now remember, everything I'm saying is a suggestion. So you might wanna find more stillness or more movement. If you're doing what I'm doing, bring the elbows close to touch when you come up to the very top of your crunch and then let the elbows go wide as you lower. A few more like this. And unlike our traditional crunch, we're letting the chin come into the chest, we're bringing the elbows to touch, and we're opening up. Good, two more. Good, and now stay up in the crunch and just bring your elbows as close together as you can. So you should feel your traps widening and accessing hopefully some super juicy spots. Now remember, ball rolling and self-massage is all about the micro movement. So you might wanna move a little bit forward and back on your block, or if you have your pelvis lifted in the air, move your weight a little forward and back in your feet. Keep the elbows gluing towards one another. So you can really get the balls deep into the back muscles and connective tissue. Good. And if you look, I'm just doing a little gentle forward and back motion with my hips and feet with my elbows glued together. Good. Nice. And then you can take the elbows back wide. Rest for a moment. If your hips are elevated, set them back down. Maybe support, put the block underneath your head or a blanket under your head. We'll just rest for a moment now. So the balls are still pressuring into the spine, but we've taken out the additional pressure Give yourself a few deep breaths to process what just happened. And 
last deep breath. Three in, three out. Good. Gently remove anything that was under your head. And take the hands behind the neck so there's nothing under the hips or neck now. You've removed all the props. You're gonna lift your hips up and now we're gonna do a rolling. So this is very much um, accessing now the whole spine. So we're taking it out of just the traps. You're gonna lift the hips, pressure down into the feet and just begin to roll the balls down the back, making sure that they're not hitting your vertebra but that they're to the left and right of the spine. And it's almost like you're working to gently straighten the legs, although the legs will likely not come anywhere near straight. Once you get to around the mid back, you're just gonna gently roll the balls back up. Good, we'll do that two more times. Gentle rolling. This can be really intense. And gentle rolling back. Good. You're sort of just making a hammock type movement with the spine and the body. Good. And then we'll bring the balls back to the trap area, set the hips down, and to just get into a little more 3D movement, we'll do that same crunch action, but have you ever done oblique crunches? So you're just gonna go a little bit to the side and see what that feels like. And then you can go to the other side. So you're lifting, it's like your elbows are going on a diagonal line. So you just lift the right elbow higher than the left and then lift the left elbow higher than the right. So now we're gently shearing, but on the diagonal. Keep experimenting, keep staying with your breath. Good, and then reposition the balls. If one of them has escaped, get them back right between the shoulder blades in that trap area. You can lift the hips if you want more intensity or keep the hips down. We'll just do some little circles, little circles. So it's like you're doing a crunch to the left, up to the right and down. And you can just see what that feels like. And again, if you want more intensity, you lift the hips. So all of this is about just a self-exploration. Good. And now readjust if you've traveled on your mat. And I just want you to bring the balls to a place that you think is going to be especially juicy for you. So when we did the spinal roll, where we rolled the balls down the spine, there might have been a point in there where you decided you wanted to maybe slow down and focus. It may be up in the traps where we've been working. Your goal now is to come into a place using ideally other props to support you, either underneath the seat or a pillow under the head. And we're just gonna spend about 10 breaths in that spot, letting the balls sink in with the opportunity for you to then add whatever micro movements you need to make. The micro movements we've explored so far have been the positioning of the chin, to pick the chin into the chest, the positioning of the elbows, taking them wide or close together, the positioning of the pelvis, taking the seat higher or lower, or playing with diagonals, taking the elbows to different heights. So you have a whole arsenal now of things you can play with and try. Go to your juicy spot, find stillness or movement, and we'll breathe together there for around 10 breaths. Some of you may want to play with reaching fingertips to ceiling or reaching the entire straight arm on a diagonal.
You can make a big circle shape with your fingers, with the balls pressing into the traps. Just close your eyes. Use your own intuition to see what you want to explore on a deeper level out of what we've tried so far. And if you don't have ideas, you can always look at the screen to see what I'm doing for some inspiration. Remember constant readjusting of the pelvis where exactly you might have a block or pillow is part of this process. Self massage is all about you. If you need some ideas or additional inspiration, Right now I'm just taking my elbows in big circles to the left and right, up towards the ceiling and then out to the sides. You can dip the chin into the chest or lift the hips. Just take five more breaths here. Just tuning into your body, your movement, and readjusting as needed. A nice way to end this segment of the practice is to do one of those full spinal rolls. So tucking the chin into the chest, hands behind the neck, attempting to straighten the legs, even though the legs won't come fully straight, and then rebending and coming back so the balls just move up and down the left and right of the whole spine. It's just a nice way to integrate the work. And then gently set the seat down, press yourself up off the balls. Inhale, take the arms up and then widen a cactus shape. We'll come into our Gomukhasana arms, so just right elbow under left. I always love to do this pose after working with the balls around my shoulder blades just to feel into the back body. Send my breath between the shoulder blades. Draw your shoulders down and your elbows down. Press through the palms into one another. Good. And then just do whatever side you didn't do. So if you were with me, we'll now take the left underneath the right. Same thing. Draw the shoulder blades apart. Pull the shoulder blades and elbows down. Send the hands away from the face. The more you can think about sending your breath, sending your breathing into the space in and around the shoulder blades where we just worked, the better. And one more big, deep in-breath. Exhale all the way. Good. let that go. So our next and last setup with our upper body rolling routine is we're going to work this intersection of muscles and connective tissue right under our armpit. 
Now this may not seem like a hot area, but there is so much going on, especially this tissue here that comes up underneath the breast tissue, the deltoid. All of these movements control our mousing in our day-to-day -day life, our writing, our computer skills. So it's really important to get into this hotbed of muscles. You're just gonna use one ball for this one and you're going to come to lie down on the ball and for now, just think of the ball as being in your armpit. And then you're just going to put your elbow on the mat and hold your head up, sort of just like you were lounging to have your photo or portrait taken. Or kind of like that Jane Fonda setup. You're just lying on your side with the ball underneath your armpit. And then you're just gonna start making those micro adjustments, looking for an interesting spot to do our single point pressure. Now, sometimes that interesting spot is a little bit lower, very coming up into where your deltoid, the connective tissue under the breast, and everything is intersecting. So if you don't feel anything, I encourage you to send your elbow forward more and get the ball closer in the direction of your hips. If you still don't feel anything, you can open the chest and round the chest. And again, whoo, I found my juicy spot. Once you find a spot that feels tender, you're just gonna let yourself sink in. And remember, if it's too tender, you can always pressure into this hand in front of you to relieve some of the pressure, right? So it's not as intense. So if it feels like that sharp shooting pain we talked about that you can't breathe into, just back off. Otherwise, you're gently sinking the ball into that juicy armpit area. Just like we did with our first exercise, we're first just gonna let the ball sink in. Single point pressure, no shearing or movement, just letting the ball and our body become one. Keep in mind, long, slow, deep breaths are the cheapest and most effective way you can self-massage the whole body. And this is a spot that I often sit with and roll for up to 45 minutes. So obviously we're not gonna do 45 minutes right now, but just know that this spot holds such a wealth of interesting Again, connective tissue for you to begin to rehydrate and unwind on your own. You want to visit it again and again. Continue to just let the ball sink into your juicy spots. Think of lengthening your exhales. Now I'll give you some options for micro movements that you can integrate into this. So one is that you can energetically think of your elbow lengthening along the mat. Another is that you can actually let the forearm drop to the ground, palm face up or palm face down. Palm face down or palm face up, you may wanna do a little bit of moving forward and back. Again, be very gentle with yourself. This work is gonna be most effective when the body is calm and receptive to it, not when you're just ironing over things like a bulldozer. You can always alternate between having the arm up and letting the forearm touch the ground. So sometimes just moving the hand between these two positions can be profoundly interesting. Again, you don't need to be doing what I'm doing. I'm trying to give you ideas 
of how you can explore and get deeper into your own juicy spots. This is the other one I wanted to share with you. Whew. Sometimes when you're rolling, you may feel like an Indian burn sensation or just some tingling. As long as it's pain that you can breathe with, it's okay. Remember, our breath is our teacher. So as long as you can breathe, it's okay. Otherwise, you wanna back off. But sometimes a hot sensation or a tingling sensation can happen. So I just want you to know that that is somewhat normal. So for this next uh, micro movement exploration, take your elbow towards the ceiling and you're just gonna exhale and just kind of round down towards the mat. Whew. And then take your elbow up and you can kind of go in the opposite direction, go a little too far back. Good, and then you can, it's like a little crunch down or a spiral down so you face your mat or floor and then come back up. And you can see if there's any juicy points there that you want to hang out. And remember, if the pressure's too intense, palm goes down. This is another really nice place to use your block and why you want everything nearby underneath your head. So if you get tired of holding up your head, you could just place your head on a block. Folded up pillow would work well too. We'll just be here for five more breaths on this side, experimenting with any of the things we've talked about. Last two huge breaths. Good. Now gently press yourself up. Just come to a seated cross leg position. Take a deep breath in. Deep breath out. And just notice the difference between the two sides. Just giving yourself and your body a moment to integrate this work. Whatever side you just rolled, notice if that side of the body feels different from the one we haven't yet worked with in this way. Good, gently open your eyes. And we'll do one stretch, my favorite stretch that I always want to do after that particular exercise is a bicep stretch. So if you did your left underarm, you'll have your left elbow high like me and you'll just hold it with the right hand. If you did your right underarm first, have your right elbow to the ceiling and we'll just press the head into the bicep. We'll knit the front ribs closed and draw the abs in and just experience a nice stretch here. Good. All right, let's do the other side to complete our roll. So props nearby and accessible. Lying down on our side body, placing the ball just in the armpit area to start because we'll do movements to find our juicy spot. Prop up the head with the hand. And again, remember, first thing, you're just adjusting and letting the ball sink in. You can use a hand in front of you for support. And you're just starting to get curious about any potential juicy areas. Just letting the ball sink in with single point pressure. Slow down your breathing. Closing the eyes is always helpful. Just tuning in. Good, 
now that we've established some single point pressure and resonance with the ball, we'll just start to make some micro movements. So we'll start just feeling where that juicy spot is that we wanna work with. Moving forward and back on the ball. And you can lean forward, lean the torso forward and back. And once you find that particularly juicy area, just allow yourself to sink in there. Widening your back and your rib cage with each breath in. Each breath out, you just surrender to the ball. We'll invite some of the movements we tried on the first side. So one is that you can gently extend the forearm to the floor. It usually makes it a lot more intense. So go careful, go slow. I'm gonna take the palm back to support the head. Oh, and keep micro adjusting. You can do a few more. Palm face up or palm face down. See what feels right for you. Two are gonna feel very different. Back up. Two more exploring on your own. If you have the arm long, you can always think of reaching the fingertips, reaching the fingertips in a particular direction. Take the top elbow to the sky for our little crunch exploration. So we'll just take the torso down towards the mat and then the elbow towards the sky, maybe leaning back. And again, we're just doing exploratory movements so we can find our juiciest spots, so we can breathe into them and soften. It's our only goal. So don't make movement just for the sake of moving. Again, I'm just showing you ideas of things you can do at home as you begin to do this very deep self work. Mm. On this side, I can't reach my block, but I can reach some other props. So I'll use those for my head. And if you have bony or sensitive hips, you could always have blankets and pillows under your hips here as well to make this even more comfortable. Let's do eight more deep breaths, wherever it is you've chosen to hang out. Slowing down your breathing. Let gravity be your friend. Just imagine as if your skin could wrap around and hug the ball. So every inhale, you're just expanding your body into the ball. Every exhale, you're just surrendering completely, getting heavier and heavier. Last huge deep breath. And very gently press yourself up.
come to that seated cross leg position. Just notice left side, right side. Take a full breath in and out. Notice if you feel like it's easier to breathe. Another huge breath in. And out. And gently open your eyes, finishing up with our bicep stretch just to integrate the work. So for me, it's my right elbow that will be high since I just rolled my right deltoid armpit area. Press the head into the bicep. Knit the front ribs together, abs in. A few deep breaths here. Hmm. Thank you so much for rolling with me. Remember, if you feel a little sore, that means change is happening. That's all part of the natural healing process. Drink lots of water from my heart to yours. Namaste.